The word grahana is used to mean an eclipse. The word grahaka refers to a customer and the word anugraha is used in the context of a blessing. Did you ever notice how these three Sanskrit words grahana, grahaka and anugraha which seem so close together in Sanskrit are translated to mean such widely different things in English? By paying closer attention to the origins and the meanings of these three words the true meaning of the word graha which is widely mistranslated as a planet can be understood in this video we'll look at the real meaning of the word graha why translating navagrahas as the nine planets is completely misguided and at the end answer the most common question which is in fact not really a question but a thinly veiled mockery which is how can celestial orbs far far away affect our life here on earth The English word planet is used in its current meaning only in the early 1600s. It finds its origins in the Latin word planeta and Greek planetes, both of which mean to move or to wander. Once the West realized that in the solar system the sun is relatively fixed and the other celestial objects move around it, they started using the word planet which conveys just that, celestial objects in motion. And of course after that the debate has been on forever about which celestial objects in motion around the sun are worthy to be known by the name planet and which are not the very word graha on the other hand is used with the earth as the plane of reference not because of a lack of understanding that objects in the solar system move around the sun the very arrangement of the navagraha mandala with the sun at the center demonstrates this understanding Our interest rather was in studying how these external celestial entities exert their forces upon us here on earth. The study is done with the earth as the plane of reference. That is why the earth is missing in this arrangement of navagrahas. Coming to the words grahana, grahaka and anugraha that I mentioned in the very beginning, all these three come from the same root sound which also forms the verb grunhati in Sanskrit which means to grab. or to take hold of the etymological definition of it is graha upadani which means the sound grah is used in the context of taking something that is why the word grahaka is used in the context of a customer or a consumer the one who takes a student is a grahaka of knowledge a plant is a grahaka of water and sunlight and so on similarly the word grahanam denotes the process of taking in it is used in the contexts of grabbing seizing and wielding an influence over something bhojana grahanam is taking in food pani grahanam is taking someone's hand in marriage rajya grahanam is wielding influence over a kingdom and so on and finally the word anugraha is used in the context of taking someone close or being favorable and benevolent to someone so you see the common theme in all these words is from the root sound grah which means to grab or to exert an influence over something or someone it is with this deep understanding that the navagrahas or the nine celestial influences were identified they are listed out in the order of the strongest influencers first that is why we see the sun and the moon as the first of the navagrahas maybe listing out nine planets was a poor imitation by the west to mimic this borrowed wisdom maybe it was just coincidence that they tried to count up nine somehow and then fumbled whichever be the case mistranslating navagrahas as nine planets and then reasoning backwards that the concept of navagrahas itself is pseudo science because it includes sun moon and other ecliptic phenomena is sheer stupidity So to answer the common question of the self-appointed owners of scientific thinking do planets affect human life on earth well as the people who named them planets the navagrahas on the other hand are verily named because of their influence upon us elaborate systems of knowledge were created around identifying their influences be it favorable or unfavorable practices and rituals were designed to either pacify these effects or move beyond them completely taking charge of one's life into one's own hands this is the basis of the entire science of jyotish shastra 
I hope you enjoyed watching this video and now have a clear understanding of the word navagrahas. In the next few videos, we'll look at all the shlokas corresponding to the nine grahas, which form a powerful chant called as navagraha stotram. Share these videos across with those whom you think might benefit from this. If you wish to support the production of more videos like these, consider becoming a sponsor on Patreon or make a one-time contribution through these options. Also, consider clicking on the subscribe button and the bell icon beside it so that you are immediately notified of our latest updates. See you in the next video. Namaskaram.